So there's the melody of Autumn Leaves all by itself. Uh, before you jump in, it's an easy one to learn for sure if you're reading notes or tab. Um, one thing that'll help make it make sense is to make sure you know that these are all notes of the G major scale, except for that one, and then that last line. But we have four lines in the A part that are the same, basically. They have three notes in a row, and then a big jump. Three notes in a row, and a big jump. Three notes in a row, and a big jump. The only difference is the last one, and the accidentals, those two sharps try to warn you we have a different scale on the last one, but it is still the same motion, three in a row, and then a big jump. So what scale is it? It's G, G major scale, on the middle two strings would be almost all the notes. You need a C, so G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's more than you need. The notes of this song end on D. So those are the four notes on the A string, G major, F sharp, E, D is the normal note in G major, C, and I believe there's a B in there too. So that's the range of the G major scale that first I would recommend you practice. You're practicing it anyway in the melody, so there it is in order. And the only difference is on the fourth phrase in the A part, we change the D into a D sharp. That's the first fret right there. And then because we're in this new scale of E minor, the walk up actually has to be different, C sharp and D sharp. And take a note too, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but that's an easier fingering for that tricky fourth line. So let's try this out together. This is E, F, G are your first sequence notes. And then we skip two notes every time, if you noticed. G went to C and you skipped A and B on the way. So this would be E, F, G, skip A and B, go right to C and each one goes down one step. We started on E, the second one starts on D. Three in a row, we get to F, we skip G and A and go to B. So let's try those two together. That's E, F, G, C. Same thing down one step in the scale. D, E, F, B. The letters keep going down. We started on E, then D, what's next? C, C, D, E, A. And then the last one should be B, C, D, E. Sorry, B, C, D, G. But that's not how the tune goes. We have a C sharp and a D sharp, but the letters stayed the same. That's an important thing to check out as you're learning jazz. The letters of scales stay the same even as you add sharps to change them. It's still the same sequence of seven letters. So whole A part. First of all, these are our notes. But be careful with that and this tricky thing to get first. And I'd really work on that one first. I've taught this to a lot of students, and this one is the uh, thing in the way. Students, even beginners, this is quite an easy melody. Really pleasant to play. You can play at any speed, but this last one, take care of that. And usually we try to do it like this, which uh, is really hard. I don't like to finger it like that myself. That's way easier. So the key is that your index finger starts that phrase on the B so that you can play the C sharp and D sharp in a more uh, practical, comfortable way to the G right there. Cool. Uh, that's the A part. Let's run through it together. A one, two, three, four. 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 One. Yeah, I almost know that that's tricky uh, because I've taught this so many times. So take time for that one. Don't feel bad if that's a tricky one right there. That will repeat, and the second ending does not have the hard part. You would get to your C up to A, and then the B part goes, sorry, the B note would just go B, A, G, kind of bluesy. So we end off a little bluesy, whereas the second time around we used the E melodic minor. Sounded quite classical. All right, the B part is easier compared to all that. It's uh, 
I'd like to point out that we've got a B chord right there. We're on a B7, more or less, B7 being the 5 of E, and we're playing the 1 and 5. Da, 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 up to G. And so that's two Ds in a row, but one of them's open, and one of them's right there. So I'd get ready on the A minor chord at measure 22. Two open notes, but have your ring finger ready. Again, it's F, G, A, D, D, C, B. One more time. Mm -hmm. And I guess I brushed over this first thing. This is a little tricky. Since you went away, those are same fret. It's a fifth apart. That's always tricky on mandolin because we want to have to make a choice. Do we take our finger off? Do we try to do both with a bar? I just in a tune this slow. You know, it sounds good enough to me. Uh, if I had to, I could do that, but I don't need to sustain them now. So we're getting to the last two lines now. And that's still notes of the G major scale, but we're skipping. C, A, F, and three spaces do form a chord. That's just the F sharp chord that's written there. That's the three notes of it, three of the four. And then get to B, F, G, A, G, F, A, G, E. There's that A, G, E again. That's a great figure in this tune. Open A, G, E. So let's just do the whole B part, and then uh, you can play the whole song in the play along. Here we go. A one, two, three, four, a one, two, since you went away. A one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, four, one, two, three, 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 four, one, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So this is a nice starter melody for uh, beginners who've learned how to read a little bit of music. Um, or just folks looking at tab. One thing that makes it really beginner, even for people who aren't reading the music, is it's all downstrokes. And you have a nice break. The phrases are similar, so it's a nice pattern tune, even though the notes are trickier than your average fiddle tune. All right, so the play along uh, is next. Feel free to slow it down to 75 or even 50 if you need to. Uh, it's just important to have experience playing these things with the band. Okay, I'll see you in the play along.